On the morning of March 25th, nurse Brittany Kirk left her window cracked open to let in the morning air. Unknown to her, her cat decided she wanted some of that air too, crawled out the window and took a 19-story plunge to her death. Wait, scratch that. Not to her death. Not even to the morgue or to the hospital. The cat survived with only a bruised chest. But how did a cat manage to survive a 200-foot fall when most 50-foot falls are lethal for humans? Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an upload and let's jump in. The saying, a cat has nine lives, is believed to originate from a cat's ability to seemingly always land on its feet and survive even the greatest of falls. The saying is so old, Shakespeare included it in Romeo and Juliet, and it even makes an appearance in an ancient Roman proverb. But where do cats' extraordinary abilities come from? Well, it's a mix of physics and biology. If the Earth had no atmosphere and you jumped off a spaceship, you would keep accelerating towards the ground until you slammed straight into it. But in the real world, Earth's atmosphere acts as a cushion, slowing you down. As you accelerate through the sky, the air gets progressively harder to push out of the way. At a certain point, the force of the air pushing up on you cancels out the force of gravity pulling you down. You're still falling, but now you're no longer speeding up. This is called terminal velocity, and it's the fastest an object can fall through the atmosphere. Terminal velocity isn't the same for everything. It's proportional to the square root of mass over the downward facing surface area. What's important to understanding a cat's ability to fall is understanding that an object's mass and surface area don't scale linearly. To visualize this, let's take a cube with side lengths of one. All these units are gonna be arbitrary. It's only the comparison between them that's important. Let's say this cube has a weight of one. Now, let's make the downward facing surface area four times bigger. What you might have noticed is that now the mass isn't four times bigger, but eight. Make the cube even bigger, and now it has a downward facing surface area of nine and a mass of 27. The mass pulling the cube down gets bigger much faster than the surface area's ability to slow the cube from drag through the air. As a result, generally speaking, the bigger the object, the higher its terminal velocity or its max falling speed will be. A blue whale would max out falling through the sky at 3,000 meters per second, an African elephant 80 meters per second, and a human 55. But the average house cat, weighing only about 8 pounds, comes in at only 26 meters per second. This means that after about 6 stories, a cat stops accelerating. So whether a cat falls off a 6 story building or a 600 story building, there isn't much of a difference. So on the physics side, a cat just can't fall very fast. But there's also a biological reason behind cats' mysterious abilities. Cats possess what's called an aerial rightening reflex. The physics behind this is explained really well in this video by Vox. Which brings us back to the cat. It seems to be able to right itself by flipping in the air without pushing off anything first, which would contradict the law of conservation of angular momentum. Sounds scary, but stick with me here. One of Newton's laws of motion says that something in motion can't just stop itself unless an opposing force acts upon it. Basically, you can't just change direction midair, while the coyote style. But to the naked eye, it looks like a cat can. Most people assume the cat was cheating by kicking off the hands of the person dropping it, but Murray's film showed what's actually happening. The first few frames prove right away that the cat doesn't start its rotation from a kick, but what it does do is arch its back. And by arching its back, it's divided its body into a front part and a back part. And the two parts can work independently. You know how a figure skater pulls their arms in to rotate faster? That's what's happening here too. Early in the rotation, the cat pulls its front legs in and leaves the back splayed out so the front half can rotate quickly while the back half stays relatively still. Then halfway through, it does the opposite. Front legs stretched out, back ones tucked in to flip the other half of its body around. And you notice by the time the cat is landing, all four legs are stretched out as far as they can be, which means slow rotation. So the cat has ro rotated itself, but not overall. The two halves are working in opposite ways. It uses the inertia of its own body weight to spin each side. And because the two spins operate separately in opposing directions, they cancel each other out. So Newton's law isn't broken. And on top of that, on long falls, cats also spread their legs out nearly perpendicular to the ground, creating a sort of parachute against their stomach, further slowing their descent. And when they land, cats' legs are very springy and muscular and basically act as shock absorbers. 
Their springy legs reduce the force on their bodies and help them avoid breaking any bones. So a cat's ability to survive these crazy high falls is one part physics and a few parts biology. I hope you enjoyed getting smarter with us today. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an upload. And remember, there's always more to learn.